So as the water flows through the landscape here, it falls naturally into this ditch, and there's not just one little low spot filling first. So it's very important when you're digging a swale that it's as level as possible, so the smallest amount of water can be dispersed evenly across that swale bottom. Otherwise, you just end up with one area of water concentration. So another thing is, is because this, this well-developed pear tree is down slope from this, the roots of this pear tree is now benefiting from the water stored in the landscape above it. So you almost always want to situate your swales above what you're growing. Another good example is these sea berries, which is also known as sea buckthorn. These are um, a, uh, a culinary variety of sea buckthorn, and so they produce an edible fruit, which is very high in vitamin C, and they also fix nitrogen. So over time, these are building up, building the soil, improving the soil, and adding fertility to it. So this is the final, this is the final destination of the water as it moves through the landscape here, guys, back here. And this, this straw-covered berm is the downhill side of a small swale. So when that pond back there overflows, it flows into this final swale here. And this final swale goes underneath this compost area and overflows behind me in a corner, which is the wildlife habitat. So back there we have some native shrubs and some blackberries and the quail like to hang out there and there's a hiding spot for raccoons and rats and whatnot. And no matter how small a site is, I always think it's important to have a wildlife feature. But this composting shed, there's some information here on it. It also harvests water. And in this small little roof here, we're able to harvest enough water to give the chickens all their water on an automatic watering system year round. So there's never any municipal water needed to, give the, to produce eggs, meat, fertilizer, and everything else that this site provides from the chickens. So this system here gets about, um, its potential I think is around 5,000 gallons per year. We're only capturing about 120. And those 120 gallons are enough to serve, serve those six chickens for the whole year. And it's hooked up to an automatic watering system here that you can see. And then another thing, thinking about design, if you have your, mo your biggest source of manure um, on site being your chickens, then you want to obviously put your compost shed as close to the chickens as possible. And then lastly, if you have something like a compost shed here, you might as well have it serve more than one purpose. So behind it is a platform connected to it, which allows the chickens to leave the chicken coop. When the chickens leave the chicken coop, they walk under a platform behind this compost shed. On top of that platform is the bees, the honeybees. And the reason that they're there is because we have slots in between the wood. And what I've learned from observing bees for about a decade now is that they keep a very clean hive and they're constantly throwing out the 300 to 1,000 dead bees that die every day. Bees, bees live an average of six weeks. So when they throw those calcium protein rich dead bees out, the yellow jackets come and eat them. This way, the bees fall through the slats in the wood and the chickens are underneath with their mouths open waiting for a healthy meal. Uh, so it's thinking about how to integrate systems. We don't just have a compost shed. We don't just have a rainwater harvesting system. We don't just have a system for reinforcing a falling down fence, but we have an integrated chicken, compost, and bee system where the chickens create what's called a chicken patrol. So now the chickens can walk around the edges of the property, keeping invasive weeds from growing into the site and keeping slugs and snails from coming into the garden. So we have a space for the chickens to go. We have a way of reinforcing a falling down fence. We have a trellis created for growing hops and different flowers that feed the chickens. And then in the summer, we grow <coughs> lots of leguminous plants and grains, which also feed the chickens and provide them with shade. So all these systems are being served one, you know, in this very small piece of land. This was, a, this was a concrete courtyard, and all the water just ran out of here. So what we did is we broke up all the concrete with a jackhammer, and we created this what's called a permeable land, permeable pathway or a permeable landscape, and all the water can now kind of percolate in between. You can see it's already filling this up. We're establishing a ground cover, and then there's a big, deep French drain there in front of the house. The water was actually in extreme storms. There's a guest, guest bedroom here, and it was actually filling this bedroom with water. Now we've had this in here for three years, and there's no more water issues, no damage to the foundation, and that French drain is slightly tilted this way, so then that water can meet up go back here to the backyard and I'll show you, it builds what we call a mulch basin system. Because we didn't have equal, um, even water distribution on the roof, this swale filled first. And the reason for that is, is that rainwater harvesting is so effective that in the last storm we had about three weeks ago, the bladder basically filled under the house. So all this water has been going into the overflow. I pulled back some straw there so you guys could see how the overflow comes into this swale. 
and it's filling this swale. Once this swale is full, it's going to overflow. And you folks are standing on a French drain there, which is okay. <laughs> Meant to be stood on. And then this French drain, which runs along all the out the uh, overflow side of the swales here. You guys want to follow me? I'll show you where it goes. So the overflow from the swales comes along down here, underground here. It comes out here to what we call a rock gabion. And basically what a rock gabion is, it's really hard to see here, it's kind of buried, but it's just a basically a basket, a wire basket filled with rock. And this, this uh, slows erosion and it also spreads the water out so it's not rocketing all out in one, um, one concentrated area. And then these are huge, these are four feet deep holes. And the idea here is that these are what are called mulch basins. This is the, the, the landscape slopes this way, so this is where you want the water to start. Once the overflow from those swales fills this mulch basin to the top, then it can overflow through what I call a rock sock. And right there, there's a uh, perforated piece of pipe filled with gravel wrapped around, wrapped with a uh, piece of filter fabric. And then the water, filtered water, flows into the next one. Once it's full, it fills into the next one. Once it's full, it flows out those pieces of broken concrete there and flows back to feed these raspberries, the blackberries in the wildlife sector back here. So I was just showing you again how every step of the way the water is used here before it leaves the landscape. And then just one more feature talking about how to integrate the chickens in the system. The idea is, is that these uh, mulberry trees are really young now. When they're established, there's a Cornelian cherry over there too. These are prolific fruit producing trees that produce fruit for a long period of time. The idea is, is that they'll be able to drop that fruit over the chickens and the chickens will have a sustainable food system for two or three months out of the year. Also there's a, a, a plant in there, it's called a Siberian pea shrub, and it produces a, a very high protein seed pod that drops to feed the chickens food. So that's the major parts of the uh, system guys, and I'm willing to do some uh, small private tours for anyone who wants. But thanks so much everyone for coming, I really feel, we really feel supported here and we want to see pro projects like this continue. And thanks so much to the Bradfords and the city, and this has just been an amazing project to be part of.